Ecosystem Services and Resilience is a cross-cutting component of the Water, Land and Ecosystems CGIR research program. But can scientists agree on just what constitutes ecosystem services and resilience? A recent workshop brought together researchers from many different disciplines to develop a shared understanding of these concepts. Here are some of their thoughts. An ecosystem services and resilience type of approach is trying to build on that traditional approach of maximizing um, the production value, but recognizes that there's a bunch of other aspects of the system that we also need to take care of, and that currently they're not being uh, valued as much as we want them to be. The idea is to approach ecosystem services as, um, as, as the sources of options. It's about the capacity of a system, and a system can be a forest, it can be a village or a village landscape, to uh, continue to develop in the face of large-scale changes or large-scale shocks and disturbances to the system. But also how you really can continue your development after those have happened. Quite often development is uh, made uh, only considering one factor, one priority, one sector. The question is that in doing that, some of the existing ecosystem services are degraded. So you increase food production, but you degrade some of the other ecosystem services. We face this trade-off between meeting short-term needs and longer-term needs and maximizing one service over the full array of services that are important for human well-being. One of the real big challenges is actually the people, different groups of people value different ecosystem services in different ways. And, and who's to say which is the correct value system? I mean, we should not neglect the power games at stake when political choices are made. And you may have people who don't want to engage in such an approach because they want to keep uh, their uh, powerful position in a dialogue. What are the best ways of both transforming ecosystems and managing natural ecosystems so that they work at all different possible scales and not designing them to work only, say, at, at, uh, at farm scale or at watershed scale? We must have uh, principles which tell us how do we design uh, systems which combine productive activities with protective functions. And this uh, protection plus production uh, uh, um, combination, I think should be one of the, of the very key principles that we should have in mind. Co-production is the realization that well, most of the landscapes that we uh, live in today are actually quite human dominated. So they're also managed by humans and uh, humans, people are living there and doing stuff to the landscape. And the services that we get out are not just these biological processes or ecological processes, but it's a combination by social and biophysical processes in, in generating services. How you ensure the tangible benefits and accordingly then they are able to provide the ecosystem service which may benefit not only that community but the other community also. Farmers do not worry about resilience or, or the health of ecosystems. They worry about eating every day and, and feeding their families. So we should make sure that whatever time scale we have in mind, even if we in terms of principles, in terms of the research we implement, have to think on the long term. We have to make sure that the impact of our decisions, our research decisions and development decisions, of course, which, co which uh, come together, uh, be efficient on the short term. Every time we've uh, managed to get policymakers around the table, explaining them that they could derive more benefits by better understanding what the different ecosystem services were, uh, they were more prone to uh, engage in a dialogue with other stakeholders and uh, draw benefits for the poor from the, those different services.
It's really about taking agriculture beyond productivity and recognizing the multiple benefits that agriculture provides. So it's putting people and nature together, understanding their interaction, and seeing how we can put nature to work for people. Thank you.